Hey guys, I wanted to share with you some untraditional, in my opinion, better methods for swapping an M50 manifold on an M54 engine. I did a few things different than typical from what I've seen on the internet. First, I'll start with the fuel rail. I used an M50 fuel rail for a few reasons. Number one, it bolts to the M50 manifold and I can bolt the beauty cover right up to it and it just looks stock and clean. And I didn't like the way that the M54 fuel rail uses those ghetto little brackets to kind of adapt it over and you have to kind of hack it up to get it to work. It's just not, not clean in my opinion. Another reason, one of the main reasons being was injector compatibility. The M54 rail works perfect for the stock injectors. It sinks down a little bit and there's no issues there, but I didn't want to run the stock injectors. The reason being was the stock injectors, they have an angle on the nozzle of them. If I can get it, there it is. So what ends up happening is these stock injectors they spray out at an angle and the reason being is because of the way that they're introduced into this intake because they're at that angle and the nozzle is angled like that what ends up happening is it sprays with the flow of the air whereas if you took a regular injector that just sprays straight out what ends up what would end up happening is it would just spray into the port wall and heavily wetting the wall. I've seen people run these injectors in the M50 intake and they seem to have no real noticeable issues but in my mind I know that it's not ideal it's not perfect. I daily drive this car I want it to be as smooth and as efficient as possible. So when you come over to the M50 intake, you have the exact same problem trying to run these injectors on this intake because they're introduced at a different angle. They end up spraying the wall of the M50 manifold and that's just not ideal. So originally I went with um, these Bosch injectors from a Volvo and Initially, I had a little bit of confusion about um, the flow rates and fuel pressure. And what I've come to find out was that the stock injectors are actually rated for 22.6 pounds per hour at three bar. But these cars run at a fixed three and a half bar. They have no vacuum reference. They do. They have a line that comes up and it goes to the intake but it's not actually under any vacuum when it's on this side of the intake and more or less just acts as a breather. If you do hook it up to the vacuum on the intake manifold, it just um, drops the pressure down from three and a half bar to three bar until the throttle opens up, the vacuum goes away and then it ramps the pressure up. But some cars are tuned like that, some cars are not. I'm not gonna go into details why. These injectors that I ended up getting were a 24 pound at three bar and these like I said before these cars were in at three and a half bar so they end up flowing close you know closer to 25 or 26 pounds per hour which is too much um, I thought I could just have someone tune that but everyone I talked to couldn't find spec spec sheets on those injectors so I ended up going with a different fuel injector um, I'll post a part number and a link to those. They're a Bosch 12 hole injector. They're also a split stream. Um, that's important because I wanted like the stock injectors to have two distinct streams for each intake, intake valve. They're 26.8 pound per hour at three bar, which is really close to the 22.6 pound per hour at three bar of the stock injector. So they're both running pretty close to 24 pounds per hour at the fixed three and a half bar that these uh, fuel systems run at. Some details about running that um, M50 rail. I Because they're a return style fuel rail um, and the M54 engines have the return at the fuel pressure regulator slash filter on the frame, um, they only have one 
one hose coming up for the fuel pressure to the rail and what I ended up doing was um, I capped off this side basically by using fuel fuel line and a cheap liquid filled gauge that I got off eBay and then also because the M50 rails I think some of them might have not had the regulator but mine did so I bought a cap that just essentially bypasses the regulator on the rail because there's no point in having two regulators so essentially it's just a non-regulated rail for the back because it's a barbed fitting on both a 5 16th barbed fitting on both the feed and return um, i used a short length of 5 16th fuel hose and then uh a 5 16 barb to a 5 16 bundy adapter or fuel quick connect whatever you want to call it and just plugged it right into the stock fuel line the ccv i used an m52 non-technical update off an e36 uh, the ccv can it plugged right into the stock um what is essentially the idle control valve port and the only thing i had to do with that was cut off little tabs that um, stuck out on either side of it and the o-ring fits perfectly fine and then i basically just got these little brackets from home depot and made my own little bracket to really secure it in place And then um, the drain was pretty straightforward to route into the factory dipstick. And then I used like a heater hose and kind of had to stretch it a little bit over the stock um, fittings to get it to fit on. But that's how I did that. For the idle control valve, I'm not actually running an idle control valve. Uh, I have, have it tuned to basically use the throttle body, the electric throttle body to meter the air to idle the engine. Um, you can go on ms4x.net and there's pretty much a copy paste method for the M54 B30 engines to do that and delete the idle control valve. So that's one less complication to take care of in terms of plumbing stuff. For the intake boot, I see a lot of people, they spend in excess of a hundred plus dollars for someone, for one from, I think it's like Tuner Motorsport or one of those companies, but I just got a cheap one from eBay. It's a reducing elbow 90 from three and a half to three inch. And I cut it down myself. I did kind of a crappy job on this side, but, uh, I tried to find one that had a lo longer run on it but I couldn't really find anything. What I did find was like equally as expensive as the other ones. So what I ended up using was hacking up a three and a half inch intake tube that I had lying around and just used another um, coupler to make up the difference there. For what normally goes on the uh, intake tube, these little, um, breather ports. I think one of them is for um, the EVAP and the other one is just a breather for the fuel pressure regulator like I was talking about earlier. Um, instead of having it on the intake tube somewhere, I thought about maybe drilling a hole in here and putting it there, but I didn't have quite enough room to do it. So what I ended up doing was just drilling a hole in my intake and using epoxy to put it in there. And that took care of that. Another thing that I did, you can't really see it, but I bought an adapter off eBay. And it's con they, they call it an adapter, but it's more or less like a plenum spacer the way, at least the way the guy sent it to me. It has the uh, D port shape of the M50 head and M50 intake. And I had to Dremel out and port match the M50 side of it myself. I didn't want to uh, port the head because it makes putting the M50 intake back on impossible and it won't make a seal. 
anymore. The reason why I do eventually want to be able to put this back on is because I have to smog this car. And I thought about it and I could probably get it to pass visually the way it is, but I wouldn't be able to get it to pass uh, tuning wise um, with the deleted idle control valve and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure of it. So I need to be able to revert back to my stock intake when smog time does come around. Another thing was because it spaces it out further, uh, you need to run longer studs. And I had kind of a hell of a time finding longer studs. And then I had the bright idea of trying the studs off one of the two spare N54 engines that I have. And they happen to be perfect length and the exact same uh, thread pitch. So you can basically just run the N54 intake studs. You can probably find a source for those relatively cheap online. But yeah, I think that's all there is to go over. Hey guys, so as I was editing the video, I noticed that I didn't touch on the subject of the head ports that actually get plugged off um, under the more traditional methods. Um, those ports, that the M MPT ports that kind of plug off the head. Um, if you go the route of using the adapter like I did, you don't need to worry about that because that adapter has a uh, it basically just has portions that come down and it uses a paper style gasket between the adapter and the head itself and it just it plugs over those ports so it's not something that you need to worry about if you go if you use that adapter like i did